I'm kind of curious about, about about how this is gonna go out. So, anyway, guys, we're gonna get on with this video. I don't want to see any guys' time. Let's see what the man uh, has got to say about why I love bad anime. I'm curious how this is gonna turn out. So let's get on with it, shall we? That anime has gotten pretty damn good in any given season now. Pretty much, can we all agree for a moment that anime has gotten pretty damn good in any given season? Yeah, now, we can definitely agree. Is guaranteed a lot of good anime has been coming out. So much good, good anime to watch. I mean, bro. this season we got My Hero, B Stars, Babylon, Hoshino Sora, Orisuki, Cautious Hero, No Guns Life, and not forgetting Doctor Stone and Vinland Saga being carried over from last season. That's a pretty strong lineup, which just seems like the norm nowadays. So it should come as no surprise that the only shows I'm up to date and have religiously kept up with is SAO and Assassin's Pride. Wow, I didn't realize your taste was so shit, Giguk. Random commenter responds surprisingly to the man that openly endorsed domestic girlfriend. As of late, I think I've cultivated this reputation as a guy on YouTube that likes and celebrates trashy anime. I don't know how, honestly, it just kind of came out of nowhere. And today I just wanted to ramble a bit about how it got this way, why it's kind of half a meme and half actually true, and why, as counterintuitive as it sounds, you shouldn't always feel so pressured to go out and find... <clears throat> Good anime. This is Dr. Trash Love, or how I learned to stop worrying and enjoy bad anime. <laughs> Bro, this Probably guy. The thing I love the most about the medium of anime is just how wide and varied it is. I've been watching anime for a pretty long time now, and I've surprised even myself by how many shows I've been able to enjoy in just about every spectrum and genre, even though the main reason I got into it was just to see some big, muscly dudes scream and punch the shit out of each other. Anime is providing hey, me with such hey, a perfect what are you gonna do, right? that expands my horizon and explore new facets of what I find entertaining. There have been shows that have pushed the boundaries of creativity in a way you just don't see anywhere else. And that is this true. Day, I've not creativity is Anything like that, that honeymoon too. period when you first discovered anime, every new show was a new experience, you know what I'm a new discovery about what you could find enjoyable, and the possibilities seemed endless. Through this journey, I found shows I love, shows I hate, shows that are so weird I still can't comprehend whether the emotion I felt towards them counts as enjoyment, and shows so god awful they made me want to go home and commit a decent guy. But I feel that does <laughs> oh, point gosh. after seeing enough that you kind of get anime. You get the intricacies and the tropes. You get what makes each genre tick. You see the nuances and what makes some shows better than others. You've seen the critically acclaimed classics and understand why they are so well respected. Yes, you sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. what makes good anime good and bad anime bad. But most importantly, you understand what your own tastes are. And once you reach this point, I find that people mostly go in one of two directions. Either your tastes have been forever changed and you can't enjoy the same things that used to tickle your fancy, or you regress to that same bright-eyed new who could find the simplest cliche shit entertaining and I remember the exact goddamn moment I realized which direction I had taken because it was when I first watched Arimo. Major spoilers for the ending of Arimo if you really care about that. Now this may come as a surprise to many, but uh, there was a time check, I thought I would hate out. Orimo, aka my little sister can't be this cute There's because actually a lot of the anime I've, been wanting to, I've actually wanted to check weird. out. Like, no guys are like definitely one of them. What the heck? Back when only season one was out, my initial impression was, man, I really don't want to watch some weird incest shit, but yeah, no, surprise, I'm not, yeah, that's just kind of weird, bro. Turned out to be an otaku culture through the cynical that, eyes of an older brother who had no interest in it. With a brother-sister relationship that actually seems like a brother sister relationship. Yeah, I know hindsight is hilarious and everything, but I'm being totally serious. You know there's some kind of twist to it, bro. Yeah, I already know though. Season two happened, and the series shifted from this slice of life comedy to more of your typical harem anime where every girl started falling for the main character. It started ah, okay, to turn into everything that had previously been nothing, satirizing, which put new. many people off, but for some reason I was still very okay with it. And then the ending happened, and he chose his sister. And I thought to myself, man. I initially didn't want to watch this because I was afraid it was going to go this direction, and here we are now. <laughs> so why the fuck am I still okay with it? This was he was not still, you're still, he was still okay with it. I first realized that I was a hacking degenerator. But also that even though I could tell there were so many problems with the direction the show went as it started to appeal to the lowest common denominator, I still wasn't above enjoying it. Despite the fact it went down the more generic harem route, I was secretly glad it did, even if it did have the opportunity to make a much more meaningful statement about otaku culture as a whole and my desire to see a sundere as the winning anime girl apparently trumped that little awkward fact that they were you know once i realized this the gigak i knew was never the same again 
I threw myself back into the dumpster I was born from and haven't found my way back out since. What I learned is that despite having broadened my taste and gained a deeper understanding of what makes good shows good, hey, it didn't still stop okay me from gravitating to, to the same the surface level head. shit that appealed to me as a newbie when I didn't know what bad anime was. And yeah, I know I'm using the term bad anime loosely here, but please don't worry too much about the semantics of what that actually means. People normally associate bad anime with things like using an abundance of tropes and cliches, having one dimensional characters, or having an uninspired story that does nothing to really push creativity or say something unique. Right, and no creativity, no, you, anime, you, 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 no totally character development, true. just a but whole I've bunch of crap going wondering everywhere. what makes certain anime such popular guilty pleasure shows. Why does something like High School DxD seem so universally loved? No, we don't surface, talk about the. Seems like a no, we talk only the first and, um, season. Yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of fucking tits. And I think it's because yeah. shows like these are so no good at understanding all, how to appeal to a very specific type of demographic. I don't like this whole, I don't like new style animation, high school DxD, what was it, what's season, what's season, what's season two? Trash. Trash. No, I don't like new style animation, I like the original, older style animation, and all that other stuff. It doesn't look right. Which brings me back to Assassin's Pride. I'm just a sucker for the cliche underdog power fantasy stories, as shallow and predictable they may be. Probably because I grew up as a scrawny ass nerd who wasn't the most popular kid in school and I can feel way more empowered here than I ever did back then because that shit stays with you. And something like Assassin's Pride is a show that excels at scratching that very specific story itch even if by pretty much every other standard it's just a generic adaptation of a hey, generic that, hey, hey. with generic Assassin's Pride is actually pretty good. I, I like it. Like I said, it's, it's nothing new. It's generic as heck but there are a few aspects like this, this uh, uh, to a certain degree I like some generic effects like this like story. Not, not this really is a show that is so story unapologetic about how many right tropes, dumb cliches and nonsensical developments Yes, it can ham fist into a story that it does this 180 and becomes this beautiful car crash you just can't help but admire. Kind of like what Era Manga Sensei did to the Yamoto genre. That's right, this is basically the Era Manga Sensei of power fantasy shows. Don't quote me on that. And you know yeah, what? Yeah, I'm about to say, you sure about that, bro? Which you was the reason I found myself going through a bit of a new isekai phase. Could you tell? Could you tell? Could you tell? Could you tell? <laughs> I know I've helped propagate the idea that a lot of isekai right. look and feel exactly it's probably this exact mentality which was the reason I found myself going through a bit of an isekai phase. Could you tell? Could you tell? I know I've helped to propagate the idea that a lot of isekai look and feel exactly the same, but when you look past the surface, you can see that a lot of them actually do have their own unique appeal. And even some of the most generic looking ones can do something unique enough to retain my interest. The reason mm. I ended up finishing Kenja Namago a few seasons ago despite trashing how uninspired it felt was because I kind of found it interesting that the reason the protagonist was OP was because he was the only person with knowledge of science from our world, so he managed to apply this to the magic systems in a way no one else could really comprehend. Okay, that makes sense. All right, that's actually a pretty good explanation. Yes, like he's overpowered as heck, but they give you a good reason on why he's actually really strong, why he's the way he is. That's actually pretty cool. Not even a little bit. I don't like. I hate anime like that too. When their protagonist is too overpowered, but they don't have a good reasoning on why that character is too overpowered. Even like that, you can kind of relate this like Naruto, for example. Like, why is Naruto so strong? Why is Goku so freaking strong. That's and, another... and at least with that anime right the there, I had never checked that anime out, but at least with that anime right so there, they give you a good reason why he's so For me, it's strong. being able to yeah. do that, but also knowing you can make a four hour rant breaking down why this trashy anime sucks ass, yet still being able to enjoy it despite of that. And I can respect any person who has that ability. Okay, congratulations, Gigok. It took you years to discover that you do actually have shit taste. Um, so what exactly made you feel like telling everyone about this? So like I was saying, I feel anime is good right now. Like, pretty fucking good. Yeah, so anime, yeah, anime is in the best, best where it's, where it's, where it's be, man. A anime is in a great spot right now, especially going into 2020, in my opinion, hands down, for sure, for sure. When I was so paranoid that I was wasting my time when watching a new show. Is this really what I'm in the mood to do right now? Is this the best show I could be watching at this exact moment? Is this the best way I could be spending my time? Instead of just trying to get absorbed in the experience, I was worried that there was something new or better I could be watching, that I would constantly be second guessing if I had made the right choice to watch it. And I think this has less to do with having watched too many anime and more with just how much choice there is nowadays. Have any of you ever wanted to chill after a hard day's work and then gotten fucking decision fatigue just scrolling down your Netflix or Steam library and spend more time deciding what you want to do instead of, you know, actually doing something. Oh my god, why is there just nothing to watch? I can relate! Totes. This is how I felt scrolling down the seasonal chart sometimes. I honestly think we've been spoiled with not just the amount of choices, but the amount of good choices we have. And it does.
This is how I felt scrolling down the seasonal chart sometimes. I honestly think we've been spoiled with not just the amount of choices, but the amount of good choices we have. And it doesn't help that I have this irrational fear of missing out. So I found this huge problem for me when I first entered the seasonal cycle is that I would find myself watching shows I wasn't in the mood for, but did so anyway in fear of falling behind or missing out on something good, which made me just huge problem for me when I first entered the seasonal cycle is that I would find myself watching shows I wasn't in the mood for, but did so anyway in fear of falling behind or missing out on something good, which made me just enjoy everything less. And it remained this way until I fully accepted that I'm never in my life gonna be able to catch up to everything I want to. And I mean, the hey, reason that's that how it took is, so man. long to realize is because I it tried it, always it did not work out in my favor. Okay, so small little tangent. I have what, what you can. I have not seen Full Metal Alchemist, original or Brotherhood? You've never I seen. I know, I know. Just oh, I'm about to crack off. So there was a time when I legitimately thought I would run out of good anime. Like yeah, watch the one of Fear after watching a few hundred shows that there was this finite pool of anime I would enjoy, and I was nearing the end of the road. I was finding less and less shows that really appealed to what I was looking for, and newer shows just didn't excite me as much. I was scared that there would be a day where I lost this passion for this medium, so I took Full Metal Alchemist, a show I knew I would love. I knew I would get obsessed with and shelved it. Purposely didn't watch it, saving it for a day when there was no new good anime coming out and I needed a reason to regain faith in the medium. This was complete bullshit, of course. Now, not only did that day never come, but at the point we're at now, I don't have the problem of worrying that I'm gonna run out of good anime. I have the problem of finding enough time to watch all the good anime out there. And yeah, now, I have yeah. a whole Patreon Discord server's worth of people who just pay me so they can hurl abuse at me for depriving myself of one of the most basic and most well-respected anime. Hey guys, how you doing? Go watch Full Metal Alchemist now, you fucking scrub! Fuck you! Yeah, on his behind, dog. <laughs> right now, there'll always be something good to watch. Your plan to watch list is an endless abyss that you will never reach the bottom of, and will only continue to grow with every season. And that's only if you watch anime. That doesn't include games, movies, or books, which by themselves have exactly the same problem. And I think this is why, for a while, bad anime became infinitely easier to watch. There was comfort in the predictable and familiar with the knowledge that I wouldn't have to invest or challenge myself too much as opposed to loading an episode of a show that was actually good. It's the same reason why sometimes a 20 minute anime episode sounds like a massive investment yet somehow I have no problem clicking on an hour long Mario Sunshine speedrun that I'll just put on in the background while I yeah, do what some the old fucking 30 minutes in and I've just sat Dang. here watching it all. 20 episodes well, just an hour. Okay, this far that's in, might as well watch another 30 minutes. I truly value right, finding I might, anime uh, that I could gives be like me that new experiences, right? great storytelling, unique ideas and just losing myself in a show. And if you're getting into this medium as well, I implore you to go out of your comfort zone because you're probably discover something completely new you had no idea oh for like, sure for sure I, I just want to shut my brain off that's some, some black hair listen, generic out of my comfort zone it's not an issue check it out something see new everything you start that. getting less overwhelmed and anxious yeah. about optimizing how to yeah. spend free time and just doing things you actually Woo. feel like because yeah, let's be honest you're always going to be behind you're always going to have another anime you have to watch or another game you have to play and once you get around to finally finishing that show there are 10 more that have been added to your list in the time you took yeah to man listen it. like listen so you gotta like, like you have anyway, to expand it bro like there's nothing wrong with watching anime, anime. Over anime. Over anime. Oh, yeah. don't ever watch my streams don't ever do it don't do it between it's my a viewings of legends of the galactic heroes hey maybe even give that old i'm all for like spending my creativity like with old and new anime you know what i'm saying watching new anime watching old anime i'm an anime type guy so i'm definitely gonna keep checking out if it looks interesting i'm definitely gonna check it out that's how that's how i guess all i'm trying to say is guys don't worry I'll watch Full Metal Alchemist one day, seriously. Let me just watch a bit more of SAO though, and maybe finish Assassin's Pride. Yeah, yeah all well, right, right maybe SAO now, but Assassin's Pride, yeah. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Wait, what did I say? All right, and just one more isekai. <laughs> Nah, he actually has solid taste. It's just that he watches anything. Hey guys.
guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. I know this is a bit more rambly than my usual fine, affair. Sorry. I just wanted to try something a bit different and just chill a bit and write down the contents of my mind without too much thought into the structure and, you know, just have a casual chat you. Geek Dogs one kind of is like one of those anime watchers that just watch Maybe anything. Maybe I'll make more videos like this. He's a so true anime said, Thank you very much I too. I can respect that. Me, on the other hand. Walter, your boy Nicholas can't Tatum, do that. <laughs> Mike Elfin, Sisters Listen, 1008, if, the, if I ain't laughing about a first and episode, and everyone else, I'm uh, Patreon for supporting me this month and helping me to not watch Full Metal Alchemist. Bitch, you watch that for me? Fucking great, watch it for me? You can also join in hurling abuse at me for not watching your favorite anime by checking out my Patreon if you'd like. It's coming up hey, to not only out, the end of the year out. again, but it's gonna be the end of the decade, and I have some content plans for just that. So. Alright, bro. Hope you look forward to it. Until then, though, no further updates today. I've been Giguk, and I'll see you all next time. Peace. So, but anyway, um, yeah, that was a great video. It's not that he has like bad taste in anime. It's just that like he's into like to like a lot of different things, not just one specific thing, which is actually something amazing. He watches literally anything, and. uh yeah, maybe I, maybe I need to start being more like that. Maybe, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like, who knows? Like, it, you'll find that perfect anime. Like, you just gotta look for it. Like, I did not think I would like Assassin's Pride, but Assassin's Pride was really great. I didn't think I would like. Actually, I knew I was gonna like My Hero Academia because it had Naruto like vibes um, from My Hero, and I like Naruto, so it reminds me of Naruto. So I knew I was gonna like My Hero. Uh, I I didn't know I I know I give you one. I didn't know I was gonna like Doctor Stone. Doctor Stone is actually a really really great anime. I didn't think I was gonna like Black Clover, and I didn't. But until as time went on, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I thought it was really great. And uh, that's pretty much how I view things. You know what I'm saying? You got to kind of give it a chance and give it a go. As time goes on, you'll be able to enjoy it. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below. What are some of your favorite anime? And you think anime is in a good spot? Let me know in the comments down below. See you guys in the next video. Bye, Bye, Z. You can also...